This is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're in a ball right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. So I want you to listen to No Holds Barred Network. Hey guys, welcome back to the No Holds Barred Network with another episode of Under the Ropes. I'm your host as always, the EVP of Giggles, the Heartbreak Chick, the Queen of the Indies, Tiffany, and I'm joined by the birthday boy, the law, Ray Ramundo, and... I love it. I'm so excited because we have special guest today, Matt Vertigo. What is going on? <laughs> Yo, what's good? Hi. <laughs> again, like, even on my birthday, I'm like, come on, give him give him the proper intro. You gave me a nice intro, though. Thank you, Tiff. Mm. But we got to do this once again. I'm so sorry, Matt. So, once again, Perfect. ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching Under the Robes. My name, once again, is the Law Ray Mundo. It is my birthday, but we are joined by the New York Drip himself, Matt Vertigo. How's it going? Hey. <laughs> Love it. Yes. The birthday boy in with the clutch. <laughs> That's so awesome. Hey. And <laughs> I see that uh, our stream is still screwing up. So, guys, I'm going to record this offline and I'm going to upload this after I apologize. So, <laughs> unless it's working now, it's still giving some issues. I see, right, Ray? I'm checking on it. Let me just make sure before I kill the stream. All right, I'm going to kill the stream because there's, there's too many issues. <laughs> All right. So we're going to continue this interview. It's going to be recorded offline. So <laughs> what is going on? As you guys have been here before, uh, here at Under the Ropes, we do interviews with wrestlers and uh, referees, anything behind the scenes with wrestling. So if you're new, welcome. And I'm a little all messed up now because of everything with the stream, but so my apologies. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna get this party started. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do some dancing. We're gonna I don't know, maybe we should like, sing happy birthday to Ray. I don't know, like <laughs> oh, we gotta sing happy birthday to Ray. <laughs> should we do it now or should we do it later? <laughs> now let's sing happy birthday right now. Okay. All right. <laughs> One, yeah. two, three. Three, happy birthday happy to birthday you. Your happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Your. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's really funny. <laughs> like, all right, let me finish. Let me finish. Happy birthday, happy birthday dear Ray. Ray. Yeet. <laughs> Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm absolutely done. All right. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Your happy birthday, Ray. Okay, cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. Let's get this started, though. All it's right. not about me. The interview is not about me. Yes. It's about Matt Vertigo. Thank you again for joining us, Matt. And so. Tiff, you got your questions? You yes, ready? I have our questions. Let's do, let's, let's do this. So, all right. So, me and Ray know you, but. We wanna we wanna like let people know who don't know you and they might not know this answer. But how did you become a professional wrestler? So pretty much, um, it it started back in high school. Um, Will Ferreira, uh, he's in ROH right now. I went to high school with him, and he started wrestling. And I went to his one of his first matches in WW, and I was pretty much blown away. It was probably one of the more memorable nights that I can remember. And from that moment on, I was like, no, I got to jump into this. This is awesome. Oh, man. It's, it's always, I feel like that's usually how the story goes. Like, we see it and we're just, like, hooked. Yeah. Like, it gets you like that. Was, yeah, I got caught. Like, it's real. amazing. I got, 
I definitely got trapped into it. I wanted, I wanted it so bad. <laughs> uh, watching him and seeing where he is right now, seeing you know how well he's doing, I'm really happy for the guy. And yeah, that's pretty much my inspiration right there. I I watched him and was like, no, I got to get, I got to get in on this wrestling. <laughs> awesome. That's pretty awesome. It's usually always something that like triggers it. So yeah, it definitely got triggered. Oh man. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so let's, let's keep it going. Let's talk a little bit about your evolution from ready to bring to go vertigo to now bring in the New York drip. How has your style or personality changed throughout the years? Um, pretty much what really happened was I started to listen. Uh, I was very, very like closed off, or I don't want to necessarily say ignorant, but I was like a very angry young kid that was just like i don't want to listen to what you have to tell me i don't want to listen to fans i don't want to listen to anyone i just want to do me and as i grew up i kind of realized you know what i mean everyone has really good ideas like everyone around me is very intelligent i gotta let's start listening to people and that's what i did i started listening i started doing what i wanted to do but at the same time taking criticism from everybody and eventually, I just really started to enjoy this drip, <laughs> as you can clearly see. <laughs> um, I feel like we're under we're underdressed, Tiff. Like we should have had should have our drip on. Like, you have your drip oh, hey, on, like I got I got some Where earrings going on. That? I don't know, Ray. You're underdressed. I don't, I don't know about you, but like you know, I don't. I, I'm, hey, I'm I'm chilling. It's I'm my I'm dripping. Hey, I'm, uh, I can't hate with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's birthday. Leave the man alone. <laughs> I gotta give him a little. I gotta give him a little bit of crap. Just a little bit. I mean, again, like we were talking off air, and we were talking about the chops that Ray got at Synergy this pack past weekend. You know, now you owe Ray a chop for his birthday. Like, oh, I definitely owe him chops. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I guess I'll get the drip chop in August. There we well, go. We'll do. Definitely gonna get that drip chop. <laughs> Man, Ray's got a list going on. Like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write down the list for you, Ray, and uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna deliver. List. You got. <laughs> it better be a fucked up list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't think it get worse than JD Drake chopping me at the last show, though. I don't know. Um, that, that, that was pretty. Is, bro. We'll see. Oh, oh, <laughs> we'll like so, like between you and Brandon Kirk, and like I don't know, like who else? I think Colin owes you a chop as well, too. So. But <laughs> but Colin's a nice guy. I don't yeah. think he's gonna do that to me. He'll do it. Colin is a very nice guy. He but is. I still think he might chop the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It was so, uh, again. Let's let's move on from okay. me. Let's let's keep going. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. This is great. Okay. So for people that like who don't know you, can you like tell us a little bit of like some of the promotions that you have worked for? Yeah, um, definitely. Right now I'm working with uh, UWA Elite. I'm working with uh, SWO in York, Pennsylvania. They travel around a lot. Very young promotion. Um, I work with Pizza Party Wrestling. Absolutely love working there. Um, everyone is so nice and kind. The wrestlers are fantastic. The shows are fantastic. So I would definitely, if you ever have a chance, check out Pizza Party Wrestling 100%. And then Synergy, Synergy Pro Wrestling. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to release it now, but there are many other promotions that I'm going to be debuting for very soon. Cool. We'll see. Ooh, I'm excited. Y'all not going to get to I like how he's sneaking in. We'll he's see. like, he's, uh, uh, but, but it's birthday. <laughs> Oh, Give him a present. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I feel nah. like that's I'm gonna get. I'm gonna use the excuse. You gonna, like, you gonna like, try and get me with that a lot tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Oh man, <laughs> I'm excited. Like again, like I have seen you before. Um, so I'm like really excited to like see where you go. And it was funny because like even at Synergy this past weekend when I was there and I was like so glad to finally like see you live in person. So me and Ray had like such a great time. Um, so it was so nice to see you. And then it was funny because like what I was tweeting about you, like a lot of people like, oh, this guy, he's going to be a star. And I'm like, I know, like I've seen him before. <laughs> like there's a reason it why. Like <laughs> it was pretty su surreal seeing all those tweets. You know, I love I'm, I'm so thankful to the fans and everyone that's watched and 
really supporting me over the past couple of weeks. I've never felt support like that before, and it's only motivated me ten times more. Right. So thank you. Yeah, um, thank you, guys. Awesome. No, you definitely deserve it, man. Like, again, like, we, even in our predictions, I was like, I was like, I think you could give it to KGB. Like, I, was, I wasn't doubting you a second. You definitely, like, even surpassed our expectations that night. It was mm. great. The match just flowed, and I feel like, well, I don't want to throw Tiff under the bus, but what are you talking she about? Against you that night. No, I didn't. It. You're yes, such you a did. liar. Yes, you back to the predictions video, and you picked KTB because you were scared about KTB, and I was ready to take his shot because I I was going for Matt. I don't re- recall mm. this. I don't recall this. I mm. think you're lying. Wow. I think he's trying to, like, throw me under the bus. See, he's laughing because he knows that's a lie. That's a uh, lie. Well, go back to the video. All right. We're going to have to go back it. to this video. video. Oh, he has the evidence. He has the evidence. <laughs> I don't remember this. Uh, Show me the footage. <laughs> I'm dead. Oh, I'm let's dead. Going, let's All right, let's let's let's. But now I'm gonna start in hot already with a very serious question. All right, Ooh. what does stepping into the ring mean for you? Pretty much, it means everything. Um, I've been wanting to do this, like I said, like some people want to do this from when they were young. For me, it started when high school, but I've been on the grind for this pretty much for over 15 years. I've been wanting this to happen. So stepping into the ring means literally everything. I try to make sure I put my all into every single match. I work out weekly just so that I know I can perform. And getting to work with a talent like KTB, that dude is jacked. Yeah. That dude is in the the best shape of his life. All right. Let me put KTB over for a second. The best shape (laughs) of his life. Yeah. I've never been in the ring with someone that's been so fast, so strong. Dude is a monster. And being able to have that moment in Synergy was definitely one of the biggest moments of my career so far. That's so awesome. Absolutely love it. You you really, like, showed it. Like, again, like, we were going nuts. We were really going. It was such a great match. It's so exciting, like, as a fan to see that. So, and it's good, too, like, what you said with, like, even, like, new fans. Like, you said even on Twitter that you're, like, welcoming, like, all the new fans that, like, watched you. So, it's so exciting. Again, oh, I'm so excited again. I can't. I can't wait to see more. Um, yeah, going from like 300 followers and within 24 hours getting to like 250 range was pretty mind blowing. Um, I was never really huge on Twitter, but then um, Ryan T. Ruff basically told me like, dude, you need to get on Twitter. Yeah. Wrestling lives on Twitter. And one thing that I can say is that Ryan T. is probably one of the smartest people I've oh, ever yeah. met. Um, the dude knows exactly what he's talking about. He's an absolute beast as a referee energizer referees always 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 learning going somewhere doing something creating positive vibes uh having some type of positive movement came to awareness he's always doing something great so listening to ryan was definitely the best move because now i definitely feel a lot more confident in myself and you know in wrestling in general he's great i mean we've had him on the podcast i've been you know I've been friends with him for a while now. I've seen him all over the place. We joke around. Like, I always tell him he's got to do the Macarena because every time I see him, he does the Macarena. Like, there's that that joke. (laughs) He was like, oh, Ryan T doing a Macarena. (laughs) I think I got (laughs) It's like our thing that I always tell him. Like, even when he went to Japan, I was like, look, you got to start doing the Macarena in front of the Tokyo Dome and you got to take video. I want to make him do it. (laughs) Next time, all he right. Goes so Japan, I will go with him just so then I get that footage. <laughs> so August, August, Ryan, I know you're listening to this, okay? August, we're gonna we're gonna do a episode again of indie talks on the No Holds Bar Network, and we're gonna we're gonna not only is Ray gonna get chopped, okay, but we're gonna do the Macarena, like we're, with all of us, we're all gonna do the Macarena. I, I I'm definitely down to do this. <laughs> Maybe we'll get Colin to do it as well. So it's, Colin's gonna do it. Yeah, he'll definitely do it. It's it's <laughs> it's Colin. It. <laughs> it's Colin Happy Hour again. Like we were we were talking about oh, him saying man. the other day. We we're like, oh, his ears must be burning. So Colin Happy Hour. <laughs> but you're right. Ryan's great people. I love him dearly. He's you know again. We've had him on the podcast, guys. If you haven't, go check out that episode. He's got such a yeah, great story. So okay, so. This one I'm actually really curious because it was like one of the first questions that like uh, when we were figuring out what we wanted to ask you, this was very important to me to ask. Okay, so 
Can we talk a little bit about your inspiration for your gear that you wore at Synergy on 7-Eleven or what we are now calling it, hashtag Chop Ray Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the gear. So you mean like specifically the jacket, or are you talking about like the tights and everything? All of it, because it, you know, not for nothing. All I kept thinking was he's wearing orange and blue, and like I was like Mets, let's go. <laughs> but it could be the I was Knicks. Hoping it's Knicks. Yeah, I'm hoping Ray it's thinks Knicks. it was about like the Knicks, and I'm sure it's probably out of the realm of what me and Ray are thinking properly. But so what? what? So, so what is your votes? Let me get your votes. I don't know. <laughs> I st- I'm still going with Knicks. I'm, I'm going gonna go with Knicks Mets. Too. That's it. Because I'm a Mets fan, and like I don't care what anybody says. I'm loyal. They might be horrible, but I'm a loyal Mets fan, and that's it. <laughs> See, I respect that. I respect that you're a loyal Mets fan, even though they suck. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, okay, I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> This is how it is. You suck and I don't care. Let's go, Nick. <laughs> I love it. I don't care. I, I love it. See, I love that he even had to diss the Mets, though, because he knows it's right. Shut Shit, up. So Shut up, the Ray. I'm coming to your it. house. You're going to get you're gonna get more <laughs> chops. Keep it up. <laughs> nah, I'm saving them now. That's a Mets fan. Protect it. <laughs> I protect them. See? Oh, See? See? So is that really the inspiration for like your gear with the the black, the blue, and the orange for it? Or yes, it is. It's the New York Knicks. I love that. I love that. That was they like the this, new um, It's their old school jerseys, though. These new school jerseys. Yeah. They don't have black on them, mm-hmm. but the old school jerseys used to have the black on the sides. Mm-hmm. And it used to make, honestly, I, I love those old school jerseys. So that's what I did. I, I made sure that I tried to design gear around those old school, gritty, you know, defense. I'm going to beat you up. I don't <laughs> care. New York Knicks. I that's love the it. Knicks I, love. I love that style. And that's kind of the personality I have that I'm going to beat you up. I don't care. I don't care if you're Kyle the Beast, the 2018 <laughs> Athlete of the Year. I don't care. I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm done. <laughs> oh man, that's I love awesome. It. I love that. That's awesome. Oh, so yeah. let's keep let's let's keep it going though. So for those that may not know, in 2019, you were awarded the most improved wrestler in UWA Elite. Though though they said you were the most improved, do you feel do you still feel that you have something to prove there? Completely. You know, 100%. I'm nowhere near done with UWA Elite. I've gotten this close to the mountaintop there. And, you know, I want to say, say that I failed. Because I don't like to see a loss as a failure. It's just you're not quite there yet. So, guarantee that I'm going to train. I'm going to mow through the rest of the roster. I'm going to get there. Guaranteed. I'm not done. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I'm like, I have to be like worried now. Cause Matt Vertigo is coming. Damn yes, right. Yes. Everyone should be scared. They should be. I'm telling you, this is the guy. See, we were saying 2020, right? These are the years. And we actually people like, who should people be looking out for? So in me and Ray's opinion, you're the one to be looking out for this year. So I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I mean, wouldn't you be afraid of a six foot six dude that could fly? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty terrifying. I'm pretty scared. All right? If I could compare my style to anyone, it's like, think about Dijakovic. Yeah. Like, that's a scary man. Six foot, like, not, what is it, six foot nine? Oof. Six foot, six foot eight, and he could fly like that. He could move that way. 360 boots. Close. Like, the, dude is a, the dude is phenomenal. My phenomenal neck. wrestler. <laughs> So one day I'm gonna stare him in the face. Ooh! All right. Take my money. Here we go. Take some money. Here you go. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Give me that money. Give me that money. <laughs> okay. So again, let's go back to synergy. Again, it's like uh, happy hour. You know, Colin, happy hour. Okay. So again, we were talking a little bit about your match with uh, KTB. So how did it feel to impress Colin? Uh, to the point that he welcomed you to on the onto the roster and wants you to come back for the August show. That was definitely something that I didn't expect. Um, I was not ready for that moment whatsoever. When Colin said that he thought about this three minutes before he came out there, 
he literally did. We did not, he did not talk to me, let me know, like, hey, you know, I want you to come back for future shows. Like, no, in my head, from the beginning, this was my one shot. This was my, like, big moment where I can go one-on-one with KTB and kind of prove myself to not to just Synergy, but to everybody else watching. So to get that spot and then to have Colin come out and basically, you know, let me know that he he was so impressed that he can't he need he wants me to come back, you know, in August. Uh, <laughs> I, to be quite honest, if I wasn't so like pumped up and everything, you know, that might have been a really teary moment. You know, I was very very proud of myself wow. for yeah. you know getting that reaction and everyone that oh, everyone yeah. in, in audience that was supporting me, chanting Vertigo, chanting Black Lives Matter, yep. um, you know, Nurses Matter, you know that that meant the world to me. Ooh, I just got goosebumps, like, because, like, we were there, and again, like, me and Ray have been a synergy so many times, and Colin's been on the podcast as well, and, you know, he's just one of those amazing people out there, he, he's a great promoter, yeah. he just, he cares so about everybody, and, and like, you know, like, like, me and Ray can vouch for it, that we know the type of person that he is, that he's such a good person, that we knew that, like, it was coming exactly where it came from you know and and you yeah it definitely was a genuine moment yeah it was was a genuine genuine. moment it was oh i completely we all stood up we were so proud of you yeah we were so excited like you know even with colin and everything like that was legit reaction so if you guys have not watched that pay-per-view go on fight and go spend the 13 dollars and go watch this pay-per-view so worth it the whole show was bangers yeah after banger after banger after banger the whole show Definitely yeah. got to go watch that show. Yeah, definitely. Agree. Definitely. definitely. Agree. I feel like we're a little, just a little biased. About we that are. Show. <laughs> I feel like we, like, it's not about just how Khan is great, how Synergy yeah. is great. Just that that night itself, it felt amazing. Yeah. We were popping for arm bars. <laughs> <laughs> like, not, not even to, like, to kid about it. We literally were popping yeah. for arm bars. It was just, like, it was, it was amazing that night. It was nice yeah, to, like, go see wrestling. Just there. Yeah. The energy yeah. was there. The fans were into every little move. It was just one of those magical nights, you know? I, it just brings out definitely the, there's you you always strive for that in wrestling when it just all clicks. Right. That's exactly. what you want. It just all flowed, everything clicked. It was just a perfect night. Uh, yeah, well, definitely. definitely. We like me and Ray. We support so many great promotions, and this is definitely one of our top promotions that we love to support. So again, like with us doing these interviews, like you know, we want to learn more about you, and like we want to put over promotions and stuff. So, um, you know, again, we'll be there in August. I'm excited. I don't know. Uh, is, is, do you have your eye on somebody maybe like that you want to get in the ring with? for august like maybe like i don't know like or maybe you want to call somebody i don't know like any thoughts i want to be real honest mm-hmm. i re- in my number one i want that rematch against ktb i think i i i know i had him i forget i think yeah. i know Ooh. that i had him i had him beat so i think if i could pick anyone it will definitely be a rematch between ktb but if we could take ktb out of the situation, okay. I got to get the whisper. Me Ooh. and the whisper, we, we came in at the same time, and we should throw down. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> some challenges, Jeez. some, 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 maybe some foreshadowing. Who knows? Maybe we're talking about it now. Maybe Colin listens and says, "Hmm." Oh, I, should book that. I don't know. We're gonna clip this. We're gonna clip it. Uh, we're gonna post I it. To remember, Matt Virgo versus the Whisper. Mm. Mm-hmm. We'll have to, I'm ready. We'll have to wait again. To see. Take my money. Take it. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> I also need a. Ta- I need to get into a tag team match with my boy Deppin. Oh, okay, in the orange and blue. Yes. Like beastie tag team. That would be nuts. Oh my god, I oh, like man. this. I like right. Imagine a tag team. Mm-hmm. Like, Deppin's the like, king, one of the king guys in technical wrestling. Matt has the height and the speed, and he could fly. Right. So right there, you got a tag oh, team right man. there. Oh, man. Imagine the possibilities. Ooh. <laughs> I'm hyped. Well, 
Uh, turn on your air though? conditioner. <laughs> Damn. It's funny though. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of segue here because it kind of works out. We're t- we're talking tag team wrestling. Ooh, so oh, I, heard, I know it works where he's out going. My next question. Oh, I know where so he's going. So you call yourself the New York Drip. Drip. However, I'm friends with a certain elite star who also likes to say he has his drip on point. So Ooh. do you have any words for Mr. Isaiah Cassidy? Ooh. Yo. Yo. I can't hate on Isaiah Cassidy. <laughs> I can't hate on Private Party. Those are my boys. <laughs> All right? You saw this. He was wearing the shirt. He this was wearing the boys. <laughs> this ain't water. All right? I- I love those boys. I would never hate on them. Listen, if you put our drip together, imagine all three of us. That would be one oh. hell of a dominant force. But wait, so much drip. <laughs> What's gonna happen if, like, you and Tony Deppin versus Private Party? <laughs> what are you gonna do? I might. I might. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, it's messed boy. up because he's thinking about turning on Tony. Nah, now. in 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 the in the it, for because in the, the competition? Sport, in the in the spirit of competition, I will have I will back up my boy, um, Tony Deppin. Okay. All right, but as soon as that bell rings, win or lose, Private Party is my boy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right, it's like when you it's like when you play your best friend in basketball one on one when you're on the court. You will punch each other. You won't care. You'll elbow each other. You won't care. But as soon as the game is over, I. Right. <laughs> so wait. Punch your ass. But we good. <laughs> so wait, 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 wait. So like, what would be the tag team name of you and Tony Depp? Oh. I kind of want to know what this. Is. <laughs> All right. So maybe like dripping Daisy Dukes. Oh yes. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh no i was there at the icw show with Deppin when he was uh wearing the daisy dukes <laughs> he's he's good we've had him on the podcast too he's absolutely amazing so i'm all for this i love it uh make sure you tell quinn about your uh bedazzled shirt because i want one too so quinn. i <laughs> i want my shirt <laughs> <laughs> Stop playing around. <laughs> I love it. Right, let me come out of Florida and beat your ass and take yours. <laughs> Stop playing around. I know where you are. <laughs> Make sure you get me one too, please, okay? He owes me one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need a whole, I need at least five of them. Okay. <laughs> I need at least five of them. Two for me, and I'll give the others to my all right, friends. All right, cool. Y'all awesome. Included. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so let's let's keep it moving. Okay, so what's the best um, advice that another wrestler has given you? Best advice? Mm-hmm. Bring your gear everywhere you go. That, that is lot. definitely one of the most important things because there have been multiple times that I have actually seen where a wrestler has gotten an opportunity and they didn't have their gear. And now they never got that opportunity ever again. And every opportunity is important. Every opportunity is important, whether it's in front of 10 people or it's in front of 20,000 people. You got to be ready at all times. I have my gear on me even when I'm at work, just in case I meet someone. Oh, yeah, I got my gear ready to go. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. I hear it a lot. I I hear it definitely a a lot. Yeah. Even at trading, like we've been told, even if you have a car, just keep it in the trunk. Just keep Keep it there. Just keep a second gear. Have a set of gear that's like for like your big shows, and then have this other set of gear that's just ready to go at all times. Like one of the greatest things I've ever been told. Another thing that I have also been told is to um, where is that? Damn it! I'm gonna get back to that. For some reason, okay, it's okay. It's It's gonna come back to you. Another really, really important thing that I was told. That I like made sure that every single show, this was something that I made sure to. Oh, okay. Another thing, every single show, 
Make sure that you introduce different styles. Go to different schools. Because this is one mistake that I made when I was young, going to one school and learning one style. Then when you go somewhere else, you don't necessarily know that style. Go to multiple different schools, learn from multiple different people, and that will help you kind of take a broad understanding of yourself and just kind of simplify it. You'll take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. The best fighters are not the ones that only know one style. The best fighters are the ones that could pull a kick from this style, a punch from this style, uh, you know, a submission from this style, and put it together. That's where the dangerous fighters and wrestlers are. So get out there. Seriously, go to different schools and learn from different people. That's good advice. Yeah, definitely. You got to be adaptable. You got to be adaptable in that ring because you never know. It might be someone, one day you're wrestling a luchador, one day you're wrestling a technical guy. If you only know one style, you're like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> I think those. Exactly. Uh, you got to be. Yeah. Definitely those... got to be adaptable in there. I definitely can agree with that because I definitely see that because uh, I do follow a lot <clears throat> of fan favorites of mine. And uh, with that being said, like, I kind of like being entertained with different matches. So even though I don't want to see the same moveset either, like every match, I want to see different styles. So those are the things that kind of like intrigue me um, when when I have like my favorites in the ring. So it's definitely great advice. And I hear it um, from some wrestlers as well that it's very, very important. So very important. Learn. Never stop learning. The training never stops. I don't care if you've been in the business two years or 30 years, you're still going to train. You're still going to learn something new. There's always a new way to do something and a new way to like learn something safely. So just keep training. That's the best advice. Don't stop training. It's good. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so if there was one person you could face again in a heartbeat, who would it be? Right now, if I could. So this is a rematch we're talking yes. about. Yeah, any any person you faced before, instant rematch. Instant rematch, I would have to say is Robbie Roller. Uh, we always put on some wild matches. Um, he's one of those guys that I feel like I can hit him as hard as I want, and he will hit me back as hard as he wants. And it's a mutual understanding. Like, okay, we're gonna kill each other tonight, and you're gonna just have we're we're, we're both just so connected so i could wrestle him all over the world i think that if i could wrestle him in japan and in mexico all over the world i'll do it every day i wrestle him every day cool cool uh, and it's good too for you guys like if you don't know these names and like you could look it up and these are great ways to find other wrestlers so that's why i love uh recommendations from wrestlers as well because you just you might not hear there's so many out there you're not going to know so everybody many. It's um, endless. Yeah, it's I'm it's learning of new wrestlers every day. I, I'm getting um, friended or fo followed actually on uh, Twitter by wrestlers, and I'm like, oh, I've never even met you before, dude. What's <laughs> up? I'm, I'm talking, learn. I'm meeting new people. This is great. Yeah. I love wrestling. Wrestling is great. <laughs> it's, and you don't know, you might you might face them down the line too. So, which is also great. Hopefully. So, and I love it. I love even like I know like we live in New York and. Uh, you know, like we travel, we travel like Jersey, Pennsylvania, you know, you can get in your car and uh, but sometimes it's nice even too to like look out on the other side in Chicago and uh, Vegas or whatever. If there might be promotions that you're not aware of. So it's just it's always great. Seriously, you never know. So many and in, in, end up um, in the indie wrestling is so important, guys. That's why I do this because it's so important. It is uh, the backbone of wrestling today. So. It oh. is. Look at all the names that's on. You watch Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Impact. You look at all the names. Started in the They're indies. All huge, they were all huge indie stars, or, or the majority of them were huge indie right. stars. But regardless, like the indies yeah. are very important. Yeah. I Definitely. Oh, I love me it. and Tim have had this combo. Even AEW itself, its roster is basically independent wrestling. Yeah. It is it the shows. whole roster. It's crazy. Like, almost the whole roster. It's, no, it's really, really crazy, and it's so important to me as a fan, and that's why, like, I love independent wrestling so much, because it's so, so. it's so important. It's, it's so important, but, uh, okay, so let's, let's move on. Uh, what move do you define as your finisher, and what made you choose your move? So, I define my finisher 
as the it's the package power driver. That's definitely the main finisher I go for. I also have the um, Claymore to the back of the head. I enjoy doing that as well. Um, but it's probably the package. If I if anyone if there's anyone that's gonna go down for the three count, they're catch, they're catching the package power driver, and it's Kevin Owens or Kevin Steen. I was going to say that, that yeah. Steen Eliza, like, you got to... Steen Eliza was, I seen it live. I went to my first ROH show. It was in Ohio. And I got to see Kevin uh, Steen hit that live. And I was like, yo, this finisher is something else. <laughs> I, I want to hit people with this all the time. <laughs> and then when he went to the E and he stopped doing it, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing a package spot driver. I'm not giving it up. There you go. Um, and it's what, what I have to think about, too, is that for a guy your size hitting yeah. move, it's like you're coming down hard. Yeah. Steen fast. is a I'm big right. dude, but Steen was, like, not the tallest guy. Right. So from you hitting it, it's like, yeah. Yeah, you're going to die. <laughs> you're done. You're, There's you're a reason die. why Kyle was like, hell no, I'm not taking that. <laughs> <laughs> Right. There's a reason why I got power bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I deserved it. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Wait, thinking about the package power driver though, and again, I I always have to do it. I have to throw Tiff under the bus uh, a little bit. Why? It makes me think of a of a little bit of a dream match <sighs> with another friend of mine. Her number one husband on that list of husbands she mentioned, Anthony Gango, because <sighs> he does a package face breaker. Yeah. So, hmm, maybe we have to see that match to see who's going to lock it in first. Mm. Oh, be able to act. Yeah, we definitely got to see that match. Bring Synergy. it on, yeah. oh, oh. Let's get it. Synergy, let's go. Come on, Colin, book this. Synergy, I, let's go. <laughs> I swear, That's Colin Colin books the like. The money maker. <laughs> <laughs> Colin books a whole bunch of matches for me. Oh, <laughs> He's God. like, I'm here just to book Tiffany's husband's and all this stuff. <laughs> Oh, oh, palms itching. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably he's probably his, his ears itching. Like, why why is my uh, ear itching? I keep my name keeps being said. Oh man. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm burying a hole here with Tiff now. Like she's gonna make a list even longer now. Okay, Ray keeps burying me, so I'm gonna just put more people to chop him. Yeah, keep it up, Ray. I'm telling you, Synergy, we're gonna have Casey. Casey's gonna come back me up. Casey Catal, she's gonna come next to me. She's gonna scream, Hey, who wants to chop Ray again? That's my girl, well, Ray. Like, see? Well, every time, every single time I say, I'm gonna throw her under the bus real quick, that's just an extra chop. Ray, you go. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Where's my piece of paper? Uh... Hold on. Let me get a pen. <laughs> Like, okay, so that's like what three? All right, hold on, I'm keeping a list right now. That's three. Okay, I gotta fight three. People. Well, we already have <laughs> Matt here, so that's number one. All right, you called out, you called out uh, Brendan Kirk. All right, I think we need to put Tony Deppin on this list too, you know, just saying. But I think go ahead, Ray, keep going because Gangone's gonna be the, the next one on the list to chop you. Oh God! Can can we not? We're friends. We're <laughs> we're all friends here. Do I gotta get chopped? Yes. I mean, and Matt I, could be friends now. You gotta chop me. Like. I mean, when it's my when it's my best friend's birthday, I still form. So. See, see, uh, see. If if I got form, my best friend, I gotta chop you for your birthday, bro. <laughs> uh, it okay, is. so. It's all good. It's all good. Let me, let's keep it going, though. Let's keep it going. <laughs> he so, wants to get away from the chops. You see how fast? I'm trying. He's not like... He's segwaying. I love it. Because it's like, the show's not for another, what, month or so, and I already feel it. Yep. Like, it's, it's, it's not... Good. <laughs> see? See? Oh, keep it up. No. Keep it up. <laughs> so, let's, let's, let's segue it, it out of here. Um... <laughs> Hoping everything gets back to normal. What's the vision for the rest of 2020 for Matt Vertigo? Hoping that everything gets back to normal is definitely I want to go overseas. Um, it's always been a huge dream of mine to go overseas, even if it's not to perform, but it's just to train and learn. Um, so that's the number one goal for me right now. I even if it's not overseas, I even Canada. I would love to go to Canada. I got my boy Von Vertigo over there. Doing his thing in C4. All right. So I got, I definitely got to link up with my dude, Von Vertigo. Oh, okay. it's kind of funny. One of the first times me and Tim spoke about you, I had confused both you and Vaughn. Because mm. I knew Vaughn well because I met him uh, WrestleMania weekend last year. 
when Destiny had come to New York, and I'm like, oh, oh man, I, yeah, I remember, I remember Matt. I'm like, yeah, I saw him. Wait, wait, no, that's Vaughn Vertigo. <laughs> uh, great, great column as well, though. Wait, there you go. You got two Vertigos. Maybe another tag team. We could go go to Canada across there the border go. and take over the Canadian team. The border for Vaughn Vertigo any day. Ooh. That's my favorite. I love it. Oof, exciting, oh. exciting. Okay, so here's a question. I asked everybody this question. It's the infamous Tiffany question from everybody, okay? Um, so, what's the craziest thing a fan's done to get your attention? <laughs> <laughs> God, he's laughing already. I love it. This is, this is the reaction I want. I love it. I want to hear about all the nut jobs. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. It's a good question that he's laughing. <laughs> okay, so it was in Ohio. I, I moved to Ohio for a couple of years, and I, I actually stopped wrestling for a while, and then a promotion came to my school because I, I was going to school out there. And so I completely started to fall back in love with wrestling again um, once that happened. And I started wrestling for that promotion, and then... One night, um, like, a whole row of, like, students tried to, like, because they were all my friends. So a whole row of students were there, and they just randomly took off their shirt and started rubbing their nipples (laughs) mid-match. And I... (laughs) Oh, (laughs) jeez. And I almost broke down (laughs) mid-match. I couldn't handle it. Look at Ray. And I turned around and flexed and looked at them and (laughs) died laughing. (laughs) Died laughing. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Damn. Definitely one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Some interesting. Just just think about it. It's only like 15 (laughs) people deep. Wow. Uh, (laughs) Just just straight. I was dying. See, see. What's oh my god! I was dying. <laughs> What's so sad that it's it's a believable story, <laughs> because I remember at a, at the dojo once something similar happening during like a dark match, and I'm like, I oh my god! <laughs> that, oh, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> Why in their mind? They uh, uh, think that this is what we're definitely gonna do tonight. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I'm done. Hey, I give it to you. If you can, if you able to stay in character and not break, that's it. You're good. Yeah. Oh, I broke. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I broke. One hundred percent. Thank God it was a tag team match. Oh, because when I tagged out, you died. <laughs> I um. was dying. Oh, this is why this is such an important question because these are the stories that I like to hear because they're funny. <laughs> You like the nipple rubbing story. I like that. I don't know. That's top of the list, <laughs> man. The you love. I like <laughs> Hey, we've had some crazy stories on the podcast. We've heard things about pizza being thrown at a referee. We've heard oh, yeah, yeah, we've heard sure. <laughs> we've heard uh, a baby was given to a wrestler and that they wanted him to do the Lion King thing or like I don't know. Oh my god, that is so funny. <laughs> we've heard some crazy stories on the podcast. So, um That reminds me of when Montez Ford grabbed that baby out of the crowd and was like dancing with it. <laughs> Did you see that on the road? Yes. That was one of the funniest I remember things that. I ever saw. <laughs> That's I was I was like maybe five or six beers in at that moment when I was watching that. I was dying laughing for like 20 minutes after Raw went off the air. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's talk a little bit like outside the ring now. Like We talked about your in-ring stuff. When you're not in the ring, what are some things that you're into? Some things that you like to do when you're not stepping in the squared circle? So outside of like, you know, the traditional like working out and, you know, making sure I get the right diet in or whatever, I really love editing. I am huge on video editing. Um, I also love video games. I'm a huge gamer. I graduated um, from LIU with a degree in video game design and I've been designing video games. So I also really enjoy that as well as like anyone else. I love music. I love listening to music. Um... I, and all types of music. 
Like I like I like people won't know, but I love I love working out to K pop. Um I love uh Metallica and Three Days Grace. I even like Boys Like Girls. I love all those bands. You know, when it comes to rap, I'm really into Gunna. I really like the Migos. Migos is pretty much where like my look kind of like, like their oh, music. Oh yeah, video, I can see it. Pretty I much can see where it, that yeah. look kind of came from. That swagginess kind of came from yeah. with the Migos. Um, and then I love anime. Huge Ooh. on anime. Oh, see, see, I was kind of hoping we talked about it off air, but I'm like. You have like an immense collection back there. As a guy that does love to collect pops as well, look at that collection behind him and the yeah, Power Ranger helmet. That I'm kind of jealous of. <laughs> that yeah, game I want to get all of them. One of those, and I still haven't bought one for myself. <laughs> if- That's my dream is to have like a whole wall where there's like shelves jutting out, and it yeah. has every single Power Ranger helmet. Oh, that's yeah. cool, man! That I, I so badass. I have a guy that actually makes them in Japan. Oh, wow. When all this starts shutting down, it's like, yeah, that can't happen for a while. Oh, and he makes so like the same as Super Sentai ones, too. Oh, man. See, now you got to yeah. send it to him so he can buy some, too. Yeah, so. I got to gotta hit him. <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> hey, the beats. If it ever goes missing, you know that Ray came and took it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'll have to put a camera up there now. Yeah. So Ray don't come in here. <laughs> Oh man. Um, okay, so here's another question that actually I like to ask. Uh, what do you have any like pre-match rituals? Pre-match ritual. Um, one thing is that I do not. Which I mean, I guess some people kind of don't like this about me, but I do not like to get fully geared up until it's time to go because I put on my headphones, I get geared up, I get into like I put on my wrist tape. And I don't mean, like, fully in gear. Like, most of the time, you know, I'm in my gear. But in terms of, like, my entrance gear, my wrist tape, um, my kick pads, what I'm wearing to the ring, everything like that, I get that set up and I'm in the zone. So then when I go out there, it's fresh. It's organic. It's not something that's been building for the past few hours. It's something that's been building for the past five minutes, ten minutes, ready to go. So that's what I really like to do is my pre-match ritual i like to make sure that like i'm getting geared up like right before it's time for me to like go out there oh that's pretty cool that's a cool that's, that's a new that's one different to hear that's yeah definitely different like i usually it is different i've seen guys people... like yeah i've seen guys like they're already dressed since the minute they get there like okay i'm in gear i'll wait till later like that's different to hear that's definitely something out of the box and hey it's working <laughs> So you it's know what? Working. It, like, did you ever watch like? Oh, I'm 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 assuming you have, but like, they'll put it in between like a big match. Let's say it's a takeover, and then they'll cut backstage to like Shayna Baszler getting her gear on. Right. Like, I love those segments mm-hmm. because that really like makes everything kind of sit in. Like everything is settling. Like you realizing that this big war is about to unfold in front of you. And that's why I like to wait and get geared up right before because I'm li- I'm feeling that moment as if there's cameras on me and I'm about to go out. I feel that energy, even if there's no energy really. That's and pretty that's cool. what gives me all that energy when I go out there. So yeah, that's definitely psychological. That's it's like it's making you battle ready. It's, it's interesting. Awesome. So, like, if you, like, so little backstage stuff, because, like, I mean, I've seen it. Like, I've been behind uh, the scenes yeah. before, what's it called? Like, before, like, they let fans in and stuff. Like, and I see, like, a lot of wrestlers, like, in the ring practicing before with their, like, opponent. So, like, so you don't put on, like, the gear. Like, you'll go into, like, regular clothes into the ring if you're going to be practicing with, uh, with, like, an opponent before before the match. Or like, are you I gonna put on like, you know, I would get on my my boots or wrestling shoes and my knee pads, so like training gear. Mm-hmm. I would definitely get in there with like, you know, I'm not gonna go in there with jeans or sneakers. You know, I like to respect the ring. Mm-hmm. I like to respect the people that step into the ring. So if I'm getting in the ring to do anything, it's gonna be in some type of training gear, and then I won't even open up my bag until, you know, right it, it's like it's almost my time. Right. My time. 
that's cool. Like again, like I like I uh, to all you fans out there, it's a little snippet of maybe things you don't really think about, but these things are so important, and that I feel like me personally, like even though like I'm not in the business, I'm just a podcaster, I'm a fan, you know. But I get to see those little snippets before, so that's why I figured like this was like a good question to kind of like continue with, so you guys get a little behind the scenes as well. So, but that's yeah, pretty I'm cool. That's a fantastic question. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's interesting, something a little bit different. So. Cool. Definitely, definitely. Um, okay, so this is the hard hitting last question for me. Um, the end goal. What's your end goal, man? Where, end what do you want goal? your legacy to be? Yeah. Like, do you think in like where I would want to be? Like, what company would I want to be working for? Uh, like or is it more goal? like from the moment I retire? Like, what exactly, you know? Uh, like, what do you want your legacy to be? Like, when this all ends, what do you want people to remember Matt Vertigo as? Uh, a guy that loved helping people. That's one thing that I love to do. I love to see smiles on people's face. I love to help people. Um, one thing, you know, if I ever become a WWE wrestler, I would be one of those guys that's heavily part of their CARES, um, their Make-A-Wish program. Um, I just love helping people and love seeing the smile on people's faces and entertaining so as long as people can legitimately sit there and think, you know, Mad Vertigo really entertained me tonight and the money that I spent on this ticket was worth it because I was that entertained, that's pretty much the legacy. That will put me at ease and make me feel like no matter how far I've gone, if this is the furthest that I'm going to go, as long as people are telling me that what I did put a smile on their face, I'm level-headed. I'm good. That's great. That's really, really good. That's 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 awesome. I love it. That's oof. Good, good shit. <laughs> good. That's all I want to do. See, smiles all around. I saw that's a it. Already. That's how. That yeah. That's it. That's how it should be. It right. We got a love lot of that crap. Energy. I love it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go into our final question. We'll go a little bit of uh, you know we'll, we'll talk, go into like your socials and we have a shout out for Colin. But to, to finish this off with one <laughs> good question, Yeet. <laughs> oh, she's breaking already. Yeet, you're. <laughs> it's good stuff. See, I love it. That's why the EVP giggles. That's just how it is. Okay, so so all inspiring or amateur wrestlers out there, what's a piece of advice that you would give them? Do not leave school too early. That is definitely what a lot of young wrestlers do, is that they get into the school, six months in, you know, they feel very confident, they feel like they know exactly what they're doing, they understand the business as a whole, you know, they basically kind of, it's kind of like going and taking that first class and getting an A. Like, you go to college, you take that first class in your major, you get an A, and now you're super confident. And maybe you don't think that you might need college anymore because you understand everything. That's kind of how young guys, some young guys end up taking that road. And the best advice, like I said before, other than going to other schools and learning different styles, just stay in school. Um, listen to your trainer. Uh, those guys definitely know a lot more about the business than you do. Um and always ask questions I never stop asking questions take criticism of take it heavily because that's going to be your best way to learn it took me years to understand that and that's because I was being very you know like I said I was being a little bit ignorant and I didn't want to listen to people but now I can say that 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 is one of my biggest regrets is not listening not training enough not um putting 100% effort into my training sessions and when, if you guys do that, then you guys will have the world. Wrestling is worldwide. It's one of those things where you can go anywhere and there will be some type of person that loves wrestling. I, I could wear a, a wrestling shirt and go into a Walmart and mil- everyone's like, oh, that wrestling, 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 wrestling. Wrestling is worldwide. So if you take it seriously, you listen to the right people, you go to different places and you learn the right way. It's endless. It really is. You could build your own business. It's endless. So that's my advice. It's great advice. Wonderful. Great advice. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Good yeah. stuff. Um, 
So let's take a little break. Let's give uh, let's give a shout out to our boy Colin at Synergy Wrestling. He's our got boy Colin. <laughs> we have a little audio clip that he sent um, for his show this Saturday, July twenty fifth, the Guarded State Invitational. Oh, I'm so excited! I can't wait to pay per view this. This so is on excited. fight. This event is going to be the bomb. It is. So guys, Back check this. The bangers again. <laughs> it is. Check this little clip out from Colin. The summer of Synergy continues with the Garden State Invitational Tournament, live on Fight TV Saturday, July the 25th. M-Dog Matt Cross, Gary J, Myron Reed, Jordan Oliver, Tony Deppin, Gregory Iron, KTB, and Simon Gotch compete for GSI Supremacy. Plus, Frightmare defends the Synergy Pro Wrestling Championship against Deshaun Pratt, and Ellis Taylor, Casey Cattell, and TJ Crawford collide to find out who will wear the cruiserweight crown. All on Fight TV, streaming live around the world, Saturday, July the 25th at 7 p.m. Eastern. All this for just $9.99. Who will win the second annual GSI? Tune in live and find out. For more information, log on to SynergyWrestling.com. Guys, make sure you pay-per-view this event. I promise you, Synergy is the best. We love it. So awesome. and make sure you pay-per-view the one in August so you can see our boy, Matt Vertigo, on it. I love Oh, Oh, let's dance. Let's dance. Let's dance. Let's, <laughs> dance. let's dance. Ooh. Let's dance. Ooh. Live on pay-per-view. Let's get it. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm more stoked for <laughs> August, so like we could do the Macarena together, and you can give Ray his chop. That's <laughs> happening. That um, is happening. It's okay, and then and then I can finally get my selfie with you. So that's yeah, it. We'll take a selfie. We're gonna take a selfie. We're gonna we're gonna. Okay. I'm, I'm excited, man. So uh, tell everybody where they can find you. Definitely. Go on to my Twitter at Matt Vertigo. Um, follow me on Instagram, Matt underscore Vertigo underscore pro. And then you can also check out my YouTube channel. That's going to be having loads of new content. Uh, Vertigo Talks. Um, I'm going to be soon. I'm going to be having a new show. That's going to be having it's going to be three of my best friends. And we're going to be playing crazy eights and talking shit. And oh. It's going to be pretty damn fun that's always the best uh the best stuff around i love it i love it the besties i saw you oh, even man. on twitter like Sounds you were awesome. working out with your best friend today i saw i saw the the the, the oh yeah, that's, yeah. That's, he's one of them yeah, yeah see see i see see i keep eyes on all my favorites in the wrestling world so um but yeah no this was great i mean you're amazing we appreciate you we can't it's wait like for thing. your like to see like your future journey and uh, again like i said like i can't wait to see you again live in person in august we'll definitely be there we'll be on the podcast again we'll we'll have some fun we'll i'll bring ray a med kit um <laughs> some aspirin maybe <laughs> yeet and you're and all that good uh, stuff so <laughs> I can't. I don't even want to get a word in because it's like anything I say is just gonna lead to another chop. Like, <laughs> yeah, watch it, and you don't want that next one. He doesn't want the next one because gangone chops are bad. So uh, yeah, uh, they are. They are. Oh, and one more thing, guys. Make sure you uh, try uh, a month free with Power Slam TV. We're partnered with them. So if you want to watch a bunch of independent wrestling, uh, definitely check out this app. So use the code No Holds Free. You get one month free on them with from us. Uh, I'm telling you, it's a great app. Team Wrestling, we are. So definitely check it out. Synergy's on there too. So you definitely yes, want to check Synergy well, is definitely Synergy, on there. UWA Elite. So you definitely you can watch the Matt Vertigo matches right yep. there on the app exactly. as well. Good stuff, guys. Get your free month. There you go. Watch there, some there watch some shows. Can't go, Have fun. You can't you can't go wrong. Uh, Team Wrestling uh -huh. again. Independent wrestling. It's where it's at, guys. I can't preach it enough. So, um, yeah, so I guess that's it for this interview. Thank you again so much. I appreciate you so much. Anytime. This was so much fun. Oh, glad that you had fun. So, and Ray, are you live over there? Do you need a med kit? Do you need? I'm good. 
birthday. I'm good. It's still my birthday. Are you lit? So we're gonna sure. we're gonna party after. This oh, okay, we're gonna so we're gonna, gonna get good. we're gonna get lit. This is water. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, oh, I love it. Oh, we're gonna do like. Get it. Party. I can't with you guys. You guys are great. Oh, All right, man. guys. Thank you again for watching on the No Holds Barred Network, the, another episode of Under the Ropes. I'm your host, as always, the EVP of Giggles, the Heartbreak Chick, the Queen of the Indies, Tiffany, the Birthday Boy, the Law, Ray Ramundo, who's going to get chopped very soon again he'll be all right <laughs> our special guest i can't thank him enough thank you matt vertigo you are the best i'm so looking forward to your your journey and i mean you're again you're the best so thank you guys make sure you subscribe like leave some comments below and share and we will talk to you soon bye guys bye.